Okay. All right, let me move the screen back here as we welcome in. Ah! ah! See that hair? Is, you nailed it. He's got to have that no, show off the hair. No hat and glasses. Yeah. You nailed it. Now it's just a matter of is dog in the room. Yeah, we'll see. Good morning, Sam. Uh-oh. Is Sam, is Sam muted? Oh, yeah. Sam was muted. Sorry. Hi, Hi Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey. My bad. Good where morning, is, guys. Where is dog? <laughs> you sound like a, like oh. a child who's learning how to talk. Where is God. dog? <laughs> you already so you already won. I heard the dog. You heard the dog. I, I had no just because I thought maybe dog would be. You did in not. Dog. You didn't hear the dog. There was no dog. Oh, I thought we just heard a her. No. No. Uh, okay. You, you didn't hear the dog. Dog is here though. Um, okay. okay. Dog is in the room. We'll see. Jason's winning. This is yeah. too much for your morning program, but thankfully, and this doesn't happen a lot. You missed uh, the sound of dog uh, uh, of. of getting rid of something in her system about two minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, then we will, uh, we will stay tuned. Good morning. We will listen for dog as Sam Amon joins us. Uh, Sam, we got a lot to cover trade deadlines, stuff like that, but let's just look, I, I've, I've heard you on these other shows that it, it pains me that you go on. You're with David. What are you Aldrich. talking about? I don't, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I did an athletic show that bothers yeah. <laughs> But like real actual national reporters, and they like slums it with us. And and you're, you know, so am I correct in saying that you know pretty much the whole deer and fox, you know, it's like Fox Gate. You know, we get something in the media to you, we we kind of freak out about it, and there's all this stuff going on. How how much at this point are you comfortable in uh and sharing with the world as to just what, you know, is, is this, what is it? Cause it, it seems like it's getting, you know, blown out. Uh, we, we might be on the verge of, of dog noise. I'm trying to monitor. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll say, uh, I don't mind talking about it. I will preface it by saying that, uh, that's a hundred percent dog, dude. That was, that was dog. That was the first dog okay, all right. another dog making noise and okay. now she's responding. All right, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's, uh, thankfully I saw yesterday De'Aaron Fox and, and, and by the way, Harrison Barnes too did media and, and Harrison kind of not as high profile, but he had, uh, not been talking recently as well. Um, with the Aaron, it's, uh, you know, it definitely, uh, kind of sprouts from that new Orleans loss they had at home. Um, you know, Jason Anderson of the B has written about some of this stuff. I thought he did a a good job breaking it down the other day in his story. Um, you know, they lose by a ton to the Pelicans as much as 50. Uh, they're trailing it at one point. And then after the game, Mike Brown is asked about why uh, in some of the media's eyes, does it seem as if um, when they get blown out that some of the higher profile guys, uh, hold on. Oh, oh, quarrel. Wow. There's some stuff going on. Oh, he muted. Yeah, it's called yelling. Um, <laughs> yeah, it really works, Sam. Good training. I'll just just talk for a minute. I'm gonna fix it. Okay. Oh, he's gonna oh. fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take care of things that need to be taken what's, care of. What's in that piece of baloney, Sam? <laughs> uh, as Sam's dealing with his dogs, we'll pause and say this. I, I really want to bring it up just to put a lid on it. Now, yeah. I don't want to act holier than thou. I asked the question when Keon Ellis went out there. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fair question to ask. All I'm really hoping to establish from Sam here, and I think we're about to, is, as, as I said, the, you and I talked about a couple of days ago, I all I'm worried about is, is it a family thing? And yeah, like, if it's, he's okay, then good. If he's okay, I don't really care after that. As, as long as he's not dealing with, like, you know, we saw what happened with Andrew Wiggins last year. Mm -hmm. We've seen this before. That was my only concern. And even then, it's no. none of our stinking business. But go ahead, Sam. No, it's... Um... He, my interpretation of it, and having talked to you know everybody involved, well, uh, other than De'Aaron, I have not talked to him about sure. it, but I have heard his perspective third hand. Um, they he took you know, he took some criticism, um, for not talking after the Pelicans game. I don't believe he was actually named, but you know, he Mike Brown was asked about the leadership council, and we know that he's the franchise centerpiece, so um, as as Jason Anderson wrote the other day, and to be honest, I was kind of happy that he wrote the context because you got to be fair to all sides here. Like 
De'Aaron that night had, you know, had not been asked by the PR staff to talk. He had a tough night and it, that was just a choice that was made. And then he takes criticism. Um, you know, I think my, my sense of it is that he was not happy with the way that, that he was portrayed, um, you know, that night. And then, just uh, gets upset about it. And so you can sit here and debate, is he mad at the reporters? Is he frustrated a little bit with how the media stuff was handled that night? I think it's probably a little bit of both. Um, I, I will say just me talking, I get it. But they, these guys, it's not just the Kings. Like some of these players, I think COVID, not to get too macro, sure. the COVID era uh, made this dynamic of what we do even more challenging than before, because when you took reporters out of the locker room and players suddenly didn't do nearly as much media, uh, they got, especially the guys who just came into the league, they got very used to, to just being able to play the game and do nothing else. Well, guess what? You don't have to like it, but the media is a conduit to the fans and the fans pay your bills. That's just all there is to it. Now we're not the only conduit, obviously there's in-house Kings media, team media, but we are an important arm um, and so I, I'd be lying if I didn't say I've got sympathy here to an extent. Um, but I am also kind of simultaneously really sick and tired of seeing star players, uh, shirk their media obligations, which if, if the fans don't know, you know, this stuff is in their player contract, this is part of the deal. Um, and so that's the macro as it relates to De'Aaron. Uh, I'm certainly, uh, kind of looking forward. I was glad that he talked yesterday and, and the first, you know, or not the first, but the first real session that he had with the media is the type of thing that uh, after practice yesterday that reminds you why there's value in it. Cause guess what? He talked about how he was on the team USA roster and, mm -hmm. and yet again, it's, you know, with good reason, it's back to a media session where the vast majority of these conversations are positive and, and really promoting what these guys are doing. Yeah, you know, I think we played a clip the other day too, Sam, speaking of De'Aaron and, and the potential of Paris for him in the summer team, uh, where he wasn't really thinking of it then, but now he's, you know, reflecting on it being a blessing, an honor to be considered one of the 41. W what do you think, though? I mean, the, I, I look at a bunch of guys that have built a pretty good basketball resume, even with Team USA, that are ahead of him. What are his odds of being one of the 12, you think? I, I admittedly need to break it down, um, which I have not done. So I'm flying a little bit blind. Uh, at first glance, <laughs> <laughs> the YouTubers see Dave exasperated. I just woke up, bro. I, gotcha. went, to the, I gotcha. went to the Warriors Hawks game last night. I oh, basically oh, okay. went to a funeral, which was yeah. very tough. So yeah. ease up, would you? Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. That was just for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the, the numbers game is tough. Um, you know, remind me of, uh, and this is, I'm showing how little I looked at the list. Steve Kerr was asked last night about having to tell some Warriors yes and some Warriors no, because he's obviously the head coach. So um, Steph obviously is is in. Which Warriors did not get in? Draymond, they left him off. Uh, I don't, did I see Clay? Clay? I don't think yeah, Clay. I don't think Clay yeah. got on there. I think Steph was the only one. So, I mean, I mean, especially in this uh, Olympic year where LeBron is kind of getting the Avengers together, you know, like Steph uh, is going to be on the team. Um, that makes life a little tougher on De'Aaron. Um, I think getting to 12, getting on that 12 is going to be pretty challenging. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I think it'll be pretty tough. Sam Amick with us. Uh, I do want to get to your visit to San Francisco last night, but, but, we would get destroyed if we didn't now that we're getting down to it there's so much you know the kings are attached to everything we we've seen this the last couple of years really and last year there was kessler edwards uh was was the one move uh i think i heard you on with da and friends and you, you mentioned kyle kuzma again but uh maybe a jeremy grant what what is your read right now uh on the kings and and, and who they they're looking at and your feel for whether or not they're going to pull the trigger at some point um, so I admittedly, you know, there's so much content and coverage out there. You kind of lose track. Yeah. There you go, Dave. Man, I'm just, I'm just getting <laughs> rave reviews today. Tough crowd. How do you say anything yet, man? God. <laughs> God. 
No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just having fun with you. See, in the days of YouTube, you could uh, <laughs> give me a hard time, and it would just, I mean, before you. For those that are, for those listening, Sam, Sam will say something like, I admittedly, and I'm faux throwing my hands in the air, like, why doesn't he know everything? Well, you can fell thing. off, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, where, 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 where's the guessing game landing here? Because really, at this point, I mean, you're. No, the admittedly you're, part is that there's a yeah. lot of coverage, so I don't know what's out there and what's not. Um, right. I did last night was interesting this time of year the value of going to games for me is is uh talking to team people from other teams who are at the games right because everybody's yeah. chatting um you know the names last night that i that were new a little bit for me in relation to the kings um were royce o'neill and, and dorian finney smith um i thought those were kind of interesting yeah um so you know maybe not as uh, sexy, so to speak, as a Kuzma who's going to bring you scoring and, and, you know, the offensive side of the ball. But this is a, a bad defensive team that's trying to get better. Those guys could help. So, um, you know, as always, I'm sure they are canvassing uh, with a, a kind of a, a wider brush than we are aware. Um, but people continue to have them, I think, on the short list of teams that are expected to do something that where if you if you gauged uh you know, somewhere between desperation and, and, you know, mild desire that they're, you know, they want to do something. So I still uh, expect that to happen. In those circles at all, Sam, are, are, what are the names you're hearing on the King's side? Like who people would be interested in? Because that to me still seems to be the biggest um, hurdle for Sacramento. I mean, they've got future picks. That's, that's always an option. That's always an asset, but I know fans will immediately plug in, oh, put in Barnes, put in Herter, put in Davion, and boom, you can get Zach Levine, and it's not as easy as that. I don't know. It might be as easy as that for Zach. Um, oh. Like he, not that, not quite that easy, but like yeah. his contract, his market appears to, to be not what we thought it would be. His injuries have not helped. Um, I, you know, he's an interesting one. Again, to be clear, I'm not hearing him right now in relation to the Kings, but, but man, it's crazy how we just talked about team USA and, and, and how people's memories are so short. Like he really comported himself well during the FIBA tournament and did the kind of stuff that, that people now are, you know, expressing concern about whether or not he can do at the NBA level um, and kind of ignoring his team USA performance. Uh, that being said, independent of Levine, it's yeah. I mean, Jay, it's, the same names with draft assets is yeah. really that's it. You know what I mean? Like I've had, I'll put it this way. Um, I do enjoy it when you occasionally stumble on another team that is at a Kings game and then, and then they will kind of, you know, kind of interject a question about a particular Kings player. It's usually a pretty good sign of why they're at the building is to scout a guy and see what they think. So, you know, I have fielded questions in the past couple of weeks about all the usual suspects. Um, people know what Barnes is, but mainly Herter and Mitchell, um, you know, those guys, you know, I think have teams wondering if, if they could help and, and wondering uh, if they want to do something there. Um, but yeah, th that's kind of how you frame the money. And then it's the, you know, what are they willing to give up draft wise, depending on who they're trying to get. With Levine at this point, it's, you, you, you might even be getting something back from what it sounds like they just want to get, it seems like they really want to get off that contract. Yeah. Um, I also could see it going past the deadline. I mean, they might yeah. just have to slow play it because they're not really getting what they want anywhere. I mean, DeRozan's coming off the books this summer. And so we'll see if he moves, you know, they have a high price tag for Alex Caruso, um, you know, and that hasn't happened yet. Could moving uh, Levine, I'm sorry, Sam, but could moving, you know, when we talk about draft capital, et cetera, could moving Levine might they have to attach Caruso and his nine point four million to Levine to move him? I don't think they're that incentivized. Okay, because I think they see Alex as that's part of the the pivot that where you've got to you've got to win that trade. You can't just get off money. Why he's too good? I mean, there's too many teams. I've heard people argue, and I know this sounds counterintuitive. But that, like, of all the Bulls pieces, DeRozan, Levine, Vucevic, Caruso, that, like, Caruso is by himself when it comes to other teams' desires and what they're willing to give up. Yeah. So um, I don't think you can miss that opportunity. 
Talking with Sam Amick here from The Athletic. Sam, what do you know about the Bucks situation from Griffin to Doc Rivers in in no time where, you know, 30 wins is, is not bad. Milwaukee was doing some good things, and that seemed pretty quick. What do you know about that situation? I know a lot. I'm going to be honest. Um, and I say it like that because uh, we always kind of enjoy uh, in our visits here pulling the curtain back on this weird media business that we're in, right? So this one was was one of the more unique stories to cover for me because um, it just has been a bit of an open secret for, I, I'm going to say, a, approximately a month that Adrian Griffin was in pretty serious trouble. Um, now, at our place, you know, pulling the curtain all the way back, we, myself, Sham Sharania, and Eric Name, who is our Bucks beat writer, um, had been putting a story together on this situation for quite some time, just gathering insight information. Um, and long story short, like we were going to publish a story about a week ago on this situation and why he was in trouble. Um, and then for a handful of reasons that, you know, I probably won't get into, but all just regular stuff, it gets delayed, gets delayed, gets delayed. We push back, we, you know, then, the news drops and you can imagine like we literally uh, we were planning on publishing our story uh, the, the following day, the following morning. And so I was about to file it in that afternoon. And then the news drops that he's out oh. at first we were, we were admittedly upset. Like, ah, oh, that's a lot of wasted effort. And now, now the, the thing has already happened. Um, I, I enjoyed the heck out of this is um, again, I, I occasionally sound like a, an athletic commercial, but the fun part about working at our place is you kind of team up and we got, we got together and basically we're like, hold on a minute. We already have all the answers to the questions that the fans already want to know. Like we already have them because we already knew this was going to happen uh, likely. And so uh, it was 89 minutes from when we, uh, the news broke to when we published a, a 2200 word story on what happened there. Uh, so in the end it, it worked out pretty well. I mean, the dynamics, that's the media portion. Uh, what happened is that really the, the, the nicest way of putting it for Adrian, which is fair, is that, you know, he was a guy who they targeted and hired as a first year coach at a time when uh, they did not have Damian Lillard, um, you know, post Mike Budenholzer with Giannis Antetokounmpo being very supportive of the hire, um, seemingly wanting a former player as his coach. Um, and, it, it, you know, next thing you know, they do the Lillard trade. Expectations go through the roof. It gets off to a bad start. You guys, I think, know the Terry Stotts subplot where, you know, Damian Lillard's longtime coach in Portland is an assistant on the Bucks, And before the regular season even begins, he's having kind of growing tension with Adrian Griffin, where you had uh, an inexperienced head coach, you know, sharing space with a longtime veteran head coach who – was very tight with the new superstar player. Um, they kind of get into it at a shoot around one day. Terry resigns. So uh, the red flags continued from there. Uh, the bottom line is this Bucks team, even with Damian on it, we know he's not a good defender and Drew Holiday is gone, but you cannot be 22nd in defense and be uh, the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks and expect to survive. And their record, even though it's 30 and 13, if you unpack it, um, it's, it's about as flawed a 30 and 13 as you can come across. So they, you know, they pull out two close wins against the terrible Pistons. And then the Bucks finally decide to make the move that, that has been in the works for quite some time. So just the last thing on that Griffin comes in, uh, he was a, a, a highly heralded coaching prospect off of Nick nurse's staff and others. He gets a job. Then they take arguably the best, if not top three backcourt defender off the team and replace him with Damian Lillard. Now they're having defensive issues. He's what, 30 and 13. My, my question to you is this, did in the eyes of other GMs, is there an argument that Griffin got a little screwed here? And, and will he, in your opinion, have trouble getting another job? I think he will personally, because I wasn't around him a ton but I was around him a little bit and it's the, the optics just weren't good. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm talking um, 
communication in, in a variety of, of environments. You know, we obviously don't see what's in the locker room, but when you hear, like we reported, that communication was a bit of an issue within the team, and then you try to juxtapose that or reconcile that with what we would often see in press conferences, it kind of made sense where you went, yeah, I don't know that that if I was, you know, getting pick and roll coverage, you know, broken down to me by this particular coach that I would feel completely uh, locked in and ready to roll. Um, it, it's just he didn't have command of the room. He didn't. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a little bit to a lesser degree of what Darvin Ham is facing with the Lakers. Darvin is a more powerful presence, um, does command the room. But I, one of my takeaways, guys, is, you know, it, it's fascinating how sometimes we profile uh, longtime role players, former players as really good head coaches, and we've seen that work. So there's no one way to, to do it with hiring a head coach. But these two guys, I find it interesting in today's NBA that it's like, man, when the going gets tough at all with the team, I think these former longtime veteran role player head coaches – they appear to be having a hard time, you know, maintaining the respect of the star players. Um, and, and I feel like some of that happened here. I mean, if this was, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a, of a Bucks legend, uh, you know, if Ray Allen had come back to. to left that, but, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I went with Ray Allen, but like, oh, gotcha. there's just like, there's a longer uh, leash and more patience with a guy who did more in the league. I feel like these guys, uh, you combine the real issues with the perception that like, well, at the end of the day, he was just a role player for 15 years. Um, I don't know. Um, but the the stakes are high. They want to win the whole thing right now. They're not young. Giannis is 29. Dame's in his 30s. Um, Chris Middleton's in his you know almost mid 30s. So I actually applaud them for making the move because um, they did not have the time to to just waste a year. Uh, we're out of time, but I got to ask you with with Griffin gone and Doc Rivers coming in, how would you grade Joe Prunty's job in changing the culture? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, Joe's you know the perfect that, guy to put in there for a minute. That dude, man, he's had a couple of those. So uh, he uh, has. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah. man. I'll be. You're just gonna let Doc just get out like that, huh? Like no, no mention of the way Doc played. <laughs> we're we're we, dude. We're we're know, out of time, go. but. I know. How did he play it? Uh, <laughs> that is just okay. One question, and we're out of time. I just wish that my our media uh, partners in the industry would also report what actually happens. It's just so gross, it's and, stupid. And he already didn't have the best uh, reputation uh, I- I- inside the industry, and uh, I gotta imagine that didn't do him any favors. Uh, that's Sam Amick. He does us favors every week by joining us. From the athletic, note that he said 89 minutes from when the story mm-hmm. broke. That 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 tells you the pride and, and, and happiness they had that well-oiled machine, and that's why it's worth the half a car payment I pay each month for my memberships. <laughs> you can get yours for a dollar. You <laughs> yeah, just just go to theathletic.com for the best sports coverage uh, there is. Sam, appreciate it. Thank you, brother. You got it. Thanks, guys. Take Thank care. You. I don't know what he did to that.